Hello, we're live. Cool. All right, all you cool cats from the old FF6 hacking place there. I'm Jack. Jackamus, or Jackamus Wedge, whichever you prefer. Most folks just call me Jack. We're just going to hang out and uh, do some music modding tonight. Tonight I'll be working on the uh, Final Fantasy VII boss theme. Yep. So, uh, I guess I'll start by showing the start of the process here. Um, so, basically, how it works is you take a MIDI, uh, there's a program that can turn it into MML, Music Markup Language, I don't recommend using that though. I would recommend coding your MML by hand. We'll get to that in a little bit there. And then from there, you take the MML, you jam it in this program right here, which is called RS3X Tool 2, which in turn jams it into a Romancing Saga 3 ROM, which you then open in your hex editor, copy the relevant hex, and jam it into the FF6 ROM, and boom, there you go! Plain sailing, real easy. I mean, Easy in the sense that it's not the most difficult thing in the world to do. It can be tough to make it sound good because the uh, FF6 sound engine, or I guess the SNES sound engine in general, can be fairly limited. So, um, plenty of people have done their own music hacks before, and, you know, it's, hey man, it's great, you know. Uh, I guess I'm pretty good at it, so I'll show you my process here. So anyway, uh, the program you're looking at right now is Guitar Pro. It's a MIDI editing software. This is Guitar Pro 5. Uh, it's pretty robust. Um, you can see up here where I've got my mouse wheel. It shows like a guitar fretboard. Um, I have that open by default, and that's just because I'm a guitar player. And on top of that, you can see that it actually shows the pitches of all the notes that you have in any given bar. The one in red is the one that I'm currently on, which is the first one here. But if I go over there to the, you know, C, you're the third fret there. It'll show the C. But it also has, if I can find it up here, right here. Yeah, there it is. I can also bring up a keyboard if you actually want to see the uh, keyboard notation. I'll get this out of the way so we can still see the staff there. So yeah, same th same idea. It'll show you all the notes in the measure up here. It'll show you the one that you're currently on, highlighted in red. Uh, I would probably recommend the keyboard thing here if you're not a guitar player. But I am, so I'm going to open that back up because it's easier for me to look at. Hey, MO6 man, good to have you on board here. Anyway, um, th this MIDI portion is already done. I, I did a fair amount of work on this off stream because, frankly, you guys don't want to watch me listen to a song over and over again and be really finicky about getting all the notes and rhythms and everything right. And ahead of time, I did also code the MML, but we'll we'll get to this in a minute here because that's a uh, that's a little more in depth. Let's just uh, have a quick listen to the MIDI here. While I have that going, I'm going to turn off the mic because I have I don't have headphones. I got the speakers on, so I don't want to give you guys a lot of nasty feedback there. So we'll listen to the MIDI that I put together here, and then I'll kind of explain what's going on. So let's do that.
Okay, cool. That's the MIDI I put together. It sounds pretty all right, I have to say. I didn't mix it or anything because, frankly, the, the mix in the MIDI doesn't matter for what we're doing here today. Also, hey, B, couldn't really say hi to you there earlier. Didn't really want to have the sound get all gross there. Uh, yeah, FF6 does have a distorted guitar sound. Um, I'll talk more about that in a little bit here because there are some nuances to some of the uh, instruments in FF6. We'll go over that too. Um, anyway, uh, the, f the first thing that I want to point out here, um, I've got this song, I did this up in 12.8. You can see right there, that's the time signature, 12.8. And that's just a convenience thing for me. This song is actually in 4.4. Four. Uh, what I'm going to do right quick is show you how this song should look. I'm just going to, we're just going to do the guitar riff, uh, the opening riff. I think this will get the point across. It's the little, uh, let me just get the guitar here. You know, that little riff there. Anyway, in 4-4, four, four, this is how it would look here. So, we'll just, uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry, I've got the program a little smaller than I'm used to here. just loop that right quick just to show that that's what we've got there well I didn't mean to start that again sorry <laughs> anyway that's what it would look like in 4-4 four, four. Um, as you can see as I was typing that in I had to keep filling around with this little button right here which assigns triplets that's kind of a pain in the butt to do in this program so just for simplicity's sake I did it up in 12.8 originally but uh, I not deliberately picked this song for this uh, I guess tutorial I'm doing here but there, there's something very important to go over here um, if you are using tiny MML to convert MIDI files that have any triplets in them, it won't spit out triplets for you. It will spit out like tied 8th and 16th notes in some capacity. So basically you end up with a, a really stuttered feel anytime you have a group of triplets like that. So instead of like da 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 da, you'd have da 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 da. And I don't know if I'm the only one that hears this, but in like some of the the uh, older uh, song mods that have been done, it's it's pretty obvious to me, and it kind of grates on me a bit here. So I'll I'll just open up the original MIDI that I have here because I want to come back to that. So anyway, uh, here's my MML file. Um, you guys need to tell me uh, if, if the text isn't coming through here clearly or not, because uh, my my preview on OBS is really tiny. But uh, anyway, right up here, this this is that same riff, that same guitar riff that I just put into Guitar Pro. So uh, let, let's break this down by measure. I'll just separate everything a bit here so it's easier to look at. So you see we have all these brackets here. Those are repeats. Those are repeats. I have three of them there, which means I'm going to loop a few things in a row. And that's basically for compression's sake. I could type each note out by itself until the cows come home, but there's a very flat limit for how much data that the ROM can handle in any particular song before it starts glitching out. So repeats will save you space in the ROM. Makes sense, right? So this first repeat that I have right here plays an A note for a 24th note, which is a 16th triplet note. So you'll be seeing, and the, then the second half of it is a rest for 24 notes or a 24th note, and, and all that does is that simulates the little chug. This is the, these are the first three notes of the song. Da, da, da. The, re, the, the rest is in there, so we get that nice chugging kind of noise on the guitar. We'll, we'll see how that sounds when we open the ROM up later. Uh, this next note here, this is the C. Da, 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 da. These little arrows here basically just tell the, the, the game 
uh, that is, you know, playing back your music to go up an octave. This, the switch over from an octave, as far as the game is concerned, is between B and C. So open bracket means go up an octave. Close bracket means go down an octave. To note, if uh, you do import any um, MIDI files that you find like lying around on the internet or whatever and uh, put them in the tiny MML, all these arrows are reversed. There's another program that you need to use called Octave Manager, which basically just flips them all. But that doesn't exactly solve all the shortcomings of tiny MML. And then here you, you know chug again, go to a D, chug again. Here's the little run. Da -da 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 -da. And then at the end of that, uh, where is it? You can see that right here. It is right there. I tell it to loop that because it plays that same riff twice before it goes up to chugging on the C and doing the same thing. So there's this loop on the C, and then there's the full nested loop right here, which tells it to play the whole thing twice. That's that. Bada bing, bada boom. Save a ton of space instead of, like, th this, this whole section without the loops would take up this whole track. So, you know, save space. Um, yeah, cool. So you see I have all these 12 notes, uh, like, like the 24, they're, they're, these ones are 8th note triplets. You can fit, you know, 12 8th note triplets in a bar. It, it, it's just math is what it is, right? You can fit 12 of these in a bar. You can see it pretty plainly right there. There's 12 of them. So it is a 12th note. If I use Tiny MML to import this file, it would import these all as 8th notes because that's how I programmed it. So uh, because I did my... MIDI that way, I could get away with Tiny MML to an extent, but then I'll have problems when I get to something like this. This is a whole note. This would be a one in MML, but uh, well, it's a dotted whole note because that's how much it takes to fill the measure in my MIDI. MML would import that as you know uh, C1, uh, uh, this you know that little hat thing. I don't know the name of the thing, and tie it to a two. So it'd be like, hold it for a whole note and then a half note. So that takes two bytes instead of one byte. So, so generally, when you know what like the pulse of your song is, what the longest note is, uh, you want to kind of try to have that be your, your whole note, your one in MML. So that's why I did this up this way. And one other thing I want to point out in the MIDI right quick, there's this little flourish on the organ when it starts. This note right here isn't actually supposed to supposed to be there. The only reason it's there is because I did this in not the time signature it's supposed to be. I'm not I can't actually use 30 second notes and fill it properly. So that basically covers the notation aspect of it. Uh, drum tracks you, you want you'll generally need two drum tracks if you're doing a more upbeat song. Like a, like a boss song or something, because you'll probably have, you know, these are your kicks, there's a tom, kicks, toms, kicks, there's a snare. And then, while well, that's going on, you got your crash, you got your hi-hats, so you'll need, you'll probably need two tracks for that, probably. Sometimes you can get away with it. Like the, uh, uh, the, the Toronto Town that I did only has one drum track, because that has a, you know, more relaxed kind of beat to it. I could fit everything in there and make it work. Generally, you're going to need two drum tracks. Okay. Um, now, I'm very familiar with this stuff, so if I'm going too fast on anything, guys, you know, slow me down, ask some questions. Perfectly okay. I got tons of time. I'm in no hurry here. So let's bring our MML file back up here. So I mentioned, like, this is track one. This is my guitar track. Uh, set up. I got tons of loops everywhere. Whatever, it's fine. Track 2, I believe I did the bass on track 2. Uh, this one's a little longer, and that's because, you know, this this isn't a really guitar-oriented song, even though, like, every cover I've ever heard of this song thing seems to think it's a rock song, when it's actually more like a jazz prog kind of song, but is what it is. So there's the bass track. Uh, this would be the synth track here, like all the little arpeggios in the background. Uh, this is the main organ track. This is the harmony organ track. 
And the reason why I need two organ tracks here is you can only have one note. You can only have one note on any track at once. So, for example, right here at the start of the song, these this is like da 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 da. Those are the opening chords, but they're chords, right? So if I go down to the other organ track, here's the other half of the chord right there. So you need two tracks if you want to do chords. Cool. All right, cool. Let's move on. This is where things get complicated as all hell. This is my this is my kick, snare, and tom track. So what's going on here? Uh, all these A's with whatever duration you see after them, those are the actual notes. Um, the, the way that the sound engine is set up is that typically A is going to be your, your default note for any of the drums. It's like, you know, the natural sounding drum. There is an exception to that which I'm going to have to fix later on. Uh, namely the, the tom drums. Uh, I need to lower the pitch on those in order for them to actually sound like tom drums. But the kick and the snare, they're always going to be A. So that's what this track is, kick, snare, toms. All these at X, whatever, that's basically telling the game, okay, you need to switch instruments here. So like this, uh, in, in this case for me, it's not always going to be the same number. I, I assign those manually in the ROM, which I'll show you when I open that up. Uh, this is saying, okay, right here, I want you to play the uh, kick drum noise. And then in this case, you'd play uh, the the kick drum three times on a twelfth note, and then it's like, nope, I want you to do the tom here and play this B note, which isn't the right note, but I'll fix that later. Then go back to the kick, play that twice, go back to the, this is the tom, the kick, here's a snare, yada yada yada, it keeps going on like that. This one down here is a little more simpler, but has the same idea. This is my crash cymbal and hi-hat track. Uh, in this case, I actually have an open and a closed hi-hat, so it's a little more complicated than I'm used to doing for one of these. Like usually my crash and hi-hat tracks are like I are like that long. That's the whole song. But this one's a little more involved, so I needed this much space. Uh yeah, B, let me try increasing the size of the font and see if that does anything for you here. Thanks thanks for pointing that out. It's kinda hard for me to tell. Let's bring it up to uh 14p. That's a little less convenient for me to look at, but uh, that really doesn't matter. This is more. This is more about you guys, really. I want. I want to show you guys how this uh, this works here. Yeah. Uh, l let me know if that's any better there. Like, uh, I don't. I don't have two monitors, so I, I have to have OBS on this side of my monitor <laughs> at all times, so I can make sure I have the right stuff up. And then my workspace is on on the other side here. Distorted but readable. Okay. Um, yeah, the the aspect ratio might be out of whack. Uh, here, here's what I'll do. Uh, right quick. Um, okay, that that looks like a mess, but I'm gonna fix that. Don't you worry about that, none. Okay, let's uh, get that out of the way here. Okay, there we go. That's better. All right. Um, make sure we can see the rest of everything there. Okay, I can see. That. I can read that now. I'll get this other stuff back out of the way here. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just remember to use this uh, one exact thing whenever I have the Notepad file open because it's the most important thing. I want to make sure everyone can see that. So as I was mentioning, this is my uh, my hi hat. Open, closed, crash. Uh, I think I have the crash at 23. Close to be 24, so open to be 25, wherever that is. I think that's the first instance of it there. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. I mean, I did a very quick test uh, with this MML just to make sure I didn't break anything because that is unfortunately a thing that happens whenever you're coding these by hand. Like, the most common mistake that I made over this one while I was coding it is, like, all these instances of 12th notes here, like, I'm just firing away on the keyboard. A lot of them were 21, so you go to play it back, and then all of a sudden, the rest of the rhythm for that track is just, she's gone, man. So I wanted to at least fix that so we're not picking through changing 12 to 21s, right? Uh, what I did not do, uh, I did not do any of the mixing, volume, or 
panning, uh, a couple of instruments aren't set properly. So we're going to fix all that. And um, as I'm going about, you know, the whole process here, I mean, you know, any questions, by all means. So let's move on for a sec here. Let's go to RSEX tool. Um, I guess I have to... There we go. So this button up here just ask you to open Romancing Saga 3 ROM. Well, I'll open it up, man. That's cool. So we'll go to MML over here. Uh, location, this is where it's going to jam it into the ROM. Uh, for convenience sake and because we don't really care about destroying this ROM at all, we'll just set it to 000. So it's right at the start of the file. Easy to find. Then you want to load your MML file, which in my case is this one right here. Then you press this import button down here. And uh, I don't know if this is showing up here, but I have a little box that comes up that says done. Sometimes that will give you an error. Uh, if it gives you an error, it's very convenient, though. It'll tell you exactly which line in, in the file the error is on, and it'll tell you which character it doesn't know what to do with. So you can basically, you know, count the lines from the top of your file, find the character, and be like, oh, okay, I just put those in the wrong order, or I typed an X instead of an A, or... Who knows, right? <laughs> so, anywho, we jammed that into the Romancing Saga 3 ROM. Woohoo! Next step. Open up your hex editor. And then we gotta open up said Romancing Saga 3 ROM. I'm just gonna use the keyboard rather than scroll through all that. So, then you wanna select to copy and start copying at offset zero, that's good. Copy up to and including, uh, it tells me how many bytes it takes up in RS3 tool. In this case, it's 92 E bytes. So we're gonna copy up to and including 92 E. And we copied it. Now we'll open the ROM, uh, Final Fantasy VI ROM that we're working on here. And um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna be replacing the battle theme just because off the top of my head, I know the uh, the hex address is in question for that, so we're going to go to X8FE43. Yeah, I think that's right. We'll find out in a minute anyway. We'll jam the song in, save her up, boom! Alright, the song is now in the ROM, assuming I got the location correctly from memory. If not, I'll just check my notes later. Uh, there's one more thing we have to do before we can actually listen to the song properly. It's going to have all the default instruments for the track that I'm replacing, in this case the battle theme. So we have to go to where the instruments are stored, which should be F4414? Yeah, that looks right. Um, in this case, I uh, I actually changed them all ahead of time, just so I didn't have to look them all up late on, on, a, on a table. Normally, this step you would want to do with um, J C E G T numbers. Uh, you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm just not remembering the exact order of the characters in his name there. But anyway, he made a program called SPC Editor, which just lets you change the instruments in all these tracks really easy. Unfortunately, I'm on a 64-bit operating system and it doesn't work, so I have to do it manually. So anyway, in in this case, what I did is uh, right right here. Um, maybe I want to enlarge this for a sec here, just so you can see it properly. Um, window... should be this one. Yeah, there we go. Now we have the hex editor up here. Uh, what I have highlighted there, that's the first instrument that I need to change. In this case, that's the, uh, that's the snare drum. So the next uh, two bytes be the kick drum, tom, Crash cymbal, hi-hat. In this case, I'm using a shaker noise. I might change that later. I don't know. Uh, open hi-hat. This one, I believe, is the guitar, bass, organ, and strings. So that's all that. Normally, I'd set that right here, but I have it set ahead of time, so we don't got to worry about that. Now we get to the fun part. We get to hear how badly I broke the music in Final Fantasy VI, because... Well, first drafts of, of songs without any mixing, which we will be going over, because I definitely have to do that, uh, they usually don't sound good. But let's give it a go here anyway. Yes, thank MO6. Uh, JCE3000GT, that's the fellow that I'm talking about. 
You know it. I know it. It's all good. All right. Now I need... Uh, is this my emulator? There's the emulator. All right. So let's just open up the ROM that I just jammed the song into here. Let's take a tab through this. We don't care about none of this. We need to get into a battle. That's where the song happens. So, uh, I'm going to mute the microphone again when I get into a battle so we can hear how it sounds right now. Just, you know, have a listen to it. And basically, anything you hear that doesn't sound right, let's talk about it in chat, and then we'll go ahead and we will fix it up. Okay, that uh, sounded a lot better than it had any right to sound for a first pass. <laughs> that said, I do have a laundry list of problems with it that we're going to work on fixing. Most of them are volume related, which is not a bad thing to be saying about a mix this early. I mean, I, I know I did go and fix a few rhythm things before I went live here, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad for the most part. Uh, MO6, yeah, that was one of the first things that... Uh, stuck out to me and I kind of knew that going in. The toms are too high pitched. So let's work on fixing that first. So let's bring, uh, let's bring Notepad back up here. Should be nice and visible. So track six here is my drum track. Any instance where I have 22, that's a tom noise. The pitch on them is completely wrong because I forgot how they worked. So for every instance of where I have a tom drum, we're going to bring it down an octave, and then we'll bring it back up for the kick and the snare because those are fine. 22, go down, and then go back up. 22 here, bring that down, then go back up. Uh, I'm just using B, A, and G for my high, mid, low tom. I might have to change those notes later too, but this will already sound a lot better when we jam it back into the ROM, and I'll kind of make a decision on whether I need to change the actual pitch of these later on. Let's just focus on fixing the octave on all of the toms first. Uh, that's just a kick snare. Here, maybe I'll do it this way. Control F and we'll look for X22. Ah, there's one right there. B, A, okay, switch is there. Fine, next. There's another one. Low tom here. Okay, find the next one.
it looks like it messed up my formatting a bit, but hopefully that doesn't uh, cause any problems. Maybe just makes it a little more difficult to look at because I made the font bigger. which is at the end of this. Should be getting close to the end of this now. There's a lot more tomfoolery in this than I thought there was. Here we go. This is the last little bit here. This is the last thing, I believe. Oh, no. There's still more here. Here we go. Bring it up here. Well, I can already see this one here. That's where I'm at. All right. We're almost done then. Cannot find X22. Okay, cool. Boom. That should fix the pitch on the toms. There's a couple other little notes that I made that we can start to work on here before we jam that in the ROM and test it out. Um, the mix is obviously very bad, and I'll worry more about that later on once we have something better to mix it to. Uh, the main thing is right... Nope, that's track five. Track three. Yeah, here we go. And the synth track. I don't want... Uh, Okay, I have the organ right here at the start. But when I get here, I put uh, X0, uh, then 0 to 8 are built-in synthesizer noises in the game. You don't have to sign an instrument. They're just always there, which is kind of nice. But in this case, I think I mixed up 5 and 6, because this isn't the noise that I want for all those arpeggios. So I'm going to try 5 right quick. But on the uh, flip side to that, whenever it gets to the lead part later on, right here, when it, this is the, the lead part, do, 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 ba, do, 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 and so on. Uh, I actually like the uh, 06 there. It sounds really retro, so I'm going to keep that for that. But then when it gets back to the arpeggio at the end of that part, I need it to go back to, I think it's right here, yeah, okay, right here. So I need to change it back to 06 here. All right, cool. What else do I have? Uh, let's see. Too loud, too quiet. Too loud, too quiet, too quiet, too loud. Those are mixing things. We'll worry about mixing later. Let's just make sure everything else is working good here. So, save our changes. Back to Romancing Saga. Three tools. As long as you keep it open. It'll remember the ROM up here. Oh, sorry, I didn't. There we go. It'll remember the ROM up top. It'll remember the MML file you had. You don't even have to reselect it after you save it. It's all good. Import it. Boom. Uh, my file's bigger now with all those uh, Tom changes I put in there. So it'll be 9.6c when I go into my hex editor here. So I'm just going to use my shortcuts again because I'm used to it. Copy. We want. 96C and open the Final Fantasy 6 ROM. Go to 8FE43. Paste and save. Boom. All right. Let's head back over. We'll reload the ROM. You have to reload the ROM every time in uh, in your uh, emulator, or else it ain't gonna work. So let's do that. I think my frame rate went down for a minute there. Is it back now? Oh yeah, it's back now. Maybe it just didn't like me switching so many windows at once. Anyway, uh, this should sound a lot better. We'll find out in a minute here, I guess, won't we?
Okay. I know I stopped it a little early, but I've already heard everything that I needed to hear there. We fixed the toms already. Those sound a lot better. And that is the synth noise that I wanted for all the arpeggios. So, all right. That is done. That stuff is fixed. Perfect. Now we have some mixing problems. Um, sadly, not all of the drums play equally at the same volume. So I'm sure you noticed that the hi-hat, the closed hi-hat that I have, is way louder than everything else in the drum kit. So I'm going to have to manually set the volume for every time the hi-hat comes in to be lower, and then bring it back up to a regular level for everything else. Luckily, I've already compressed the hell of this track, so that's a just its going to be as quick of a fix as when I did the... Uh, brackets in my drum track for the toms. So every time you see 24, that's going to be a hi-hat. We need to make it quieter. So I have it set by default to 100, and the other, uh, the snare, or not the snare, sorry, the crash and the open hi-hat sounded pretty okay. So I'll just need to bring, excuse me, you know, the old beer, she does that to you. Uh, we'll just have to bring the hi-hat down, and then anytime it switches instrument after, we just have to bring it right back up to 100, and we'll go with that for the mix for this particular track. And for now, for now, I might have to tweak all this stuff later. Like, the mixing is the most important part. You want everything to be audible at a good level. That's what it's all about. So every time 24 is 40, every time there's not 24, 100. Um, Make sure we're all looking at the same thing again here. <laughs> yeah. 24, 40, anything else, 100. So let's get to work there. Okay, I need one in here because this is a new bracket. Honestly, this is something I probably should have done ahead of time because I know that that hi-hat noise is way too loud. So, I apologize for wasting a little bit of our time here. I don't need one there because I'm going from 25 to 23. Cool. Save a bite. If you say so, M06. If you say so, man. I guess I'm in, you know, no real hurry. If no one else is any real hurry, it's all good, right? The night's still young. I've only been streaming for what 40 minutes or something maybe peanuts peanuts should do it for that track. I'm going to hope that that's a good level for everything else there. Um, I kind of feel like the whole of my kick, snare, and bass track is too quiet, so I'm just going to globally bring that up for now and see how that works. Um, let's see, that's the organ track. Yeah, the level of the organ is going to depend on other stuff that I hear. I already know that uh, this X05 noise, that was a little too quiet, so I'm going to bump that up to 110. Then when we get back to 06, I'm going to bring that back down, and then when we get back to... 
Oh, I see what I did. This one's supposed to be five. Okay, cool. Bump down the six. Bump up the five. Leave, leave the organ for now. Uh, what do we got here? The bass. Bass sounded pretty good at the volume. I feel like I could bring the guitar up just a little bit. So we'll go 105 there. And we'll try those changes out here. Unknown command, line 291, 0, 0,40. Uh-oh. I typed something wrong in here. Somewhere I was fooling around with a volume. Let's see if I can find exactly what it's asking for. Nope. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, Anyway, uh, I didn't mean to show this, but maybe it's something that's good that I did show. Sometimes you break the MML when you make little changes like this. You're typing too fast, and, uh, yeah, that's no good. I don't see anywhere where I actually screwed it up. So let's just check this one by one here. Anytime it skips one over, that's probably the one I screwed up. Uh-oh. Hmm. Line numbers. Um, this is just the basic notepad. I'm not sure if there's a way to open line numbers. That would certainly make it a lot easier, because it tells me exactly what line the error is in. But uh, when it's like 200 and something, uh, that's a lot of counting. <laughs> there must be like a, a go-to command in here, right? Uh, I've never had this problem just by putting in volume numbers before, so this is, uh, this is a little irritating. I'm just scanning it again by face here and see if I can find out what I did wrong here. I really didn't like one of my volume commands there. I don't see. Uh, it looks all right. Maybe it's just a fluke. Let's just try it again right quick. Line two, number one, unknown command, zero. It says zero comma 40. Zero comma 40. Okay, it can't even find that. You can find like comma four maybe. No, okay. What is it complaining about then? Like maybe I missed a, a V? That doesn't look right, does it? Let me try that. That that was a weird looking V. Maybe I did something weird there. Yeah, okay, that was exactly what it was. There we go. Alright. So I had right here. I had something that wasn't a V that looked exactly like a V. So I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> there we go. At least that problem is solved. So let's not ever worry about that again. Come to think of it, I did not look up how many bytes I'm supposed to copy. 9C6. 9C6. All right. All right, crisis averted. Let's keep going. <laughs>
busy figuring that out. Um, right, I brought the hi-hat volume down, obviously, that was what caused the problem. And then I tried to do a little preemptive uh, mixing of the other channels there. So let's see how we're sounding now. I'll let it play through the whole, uh, the whole way this time, because we're pretty much in mixing territory. didn't turn the microphone back on there. Uh, get out of the way, SNES. All right. Um, hmm. I, I think, uh, well, let's face the obvious. The organ's way too loud. It's louder than absolutely everything else, and that is no good. So the organ absolutely needs to come down. Um, the strings need to come up a bit when they kick in. And the organ needs to come down even more whenever it gets to uh, to a part a little later on in the uh, in the song. Whenever it's just like little background noise. All right, so let's try uh, my organ at 80 for the bulk of the song. And when it gets to this part here, we'll bring it down to 60 maybe. I guess I have to do the same to this track here. Volume 80, and then later on, uh, volume 60. Now, when the strings come in here at this 29, that has to get louder. So let's try... It seemed really quiet. Let's try 120, which is almost the max, which is uh, 127. Let's try 120 for the strings there. And in the synth track here, uh, let me see, here's another instance of the organ that needs to come down, I already brought this up, that sounded good as background, when it gets to this last arpeggio here, it's too, it's too, it's, it's not too quiet, it's, it's too low an octave, it doesn't have that, that punch to it, it's too, it's too low, let's bring this up, so we'll make it go up the octave here, and let me just, Check my repeat. Okay, I'm forcing it to go to an octave after the repeat, so that should be okay like that. Um, I still think the guitar is too quiet. Let's bring the guitar up to 110. It's not a very guitar-centric song, but I can't really hear it at all. And the last thing I heard was that the open hi-hat down here, just a little too loud, so 25 we need to bring down. I don't think it happens until here. Yeah, let's bring it down to a 90. And then we have that. That works. Okay, 90 here. That's fine. There's a crash at 100. Okay. 90. Yep. 90. And then this crash is going to need a volume control now. There goes the bite that I saved earlier.
Okay, let's try all those changes. Just some basic volume things. Uh, I don't think I maximized my notepad there, so I don't know if anyone saw what I was doing there, so I apologize for that. I'm just kind of flying through everything here. This should be a bigger file again, and it is. It's at 9D7 now. Uh, do, copy 9D7. Boom. All right. Let's get our game back up here, and we'll give this son of a bitch a go. Okay, we're getting there. That open hi-hat is really bugging me. I don't think it's a volume issue. I think I might have it set to the wrong pitch. I think I have it set too high. That that open that open hi-hat sounds kind of crappy. So, I might have to change the pitch on that. So, every instance of 25. Let's try bringing it down to like an E and see if that sounds any better. I don't think there's any up here. Oh, let me bring the notepad back up better so you can see what I'm doing here. So yeah, everywhere we got 25, let's change that A note to an E note and see if that sounds any better. That's the first thing we'll do this time around. There's a couple other things I want to tweak here, too. The organ is still way, way too friggin' loud as far as I'm concerned. It sounded better in the second half of the song where I brought it way down. But then again, I might want to bring that down more later. I don't know, man. Not all sounds are created equal, after all. E, and I think that's the last one. Yeah, it's the last one, okay. So that's what we'll do there. But uh, that last little flourish where I brought it up an octave in the synth track, I'm thinking maybe I don't actually want to bring it up the octave there anymore. It was fun to try, but... Uh, it's kind of verging into the range where the instrument stops sounding good. I'll just uh, just turn it up and give it a little more oomph instead. Keep it at the lower register. Um, the bass sounding a bit muddy. I I don't. Well, I'm I'm hearing it straight out of my speakers here, so it might be a little different if you're hearing the uh, the like straight up. Uh, audio from my computer sent over OBS. Um, what I plan on doing with the bass though is I'm just gonna pan, pan the bass and the guitar apart so it sounds less muddy. One sec there bud. 
All right, guys. Um, I have to take care of something right quick. I will be right back with you. Sorry. Responsibility sucks. Alright, what was I doing? I'm in the synth track. Right, I stop it being up an octave, tweak the volume. Okay, cool, next. The organ's still too goddamn loud. Let's bring it down to 70. In all places except where I brought it down even further and leave it there. Let's try that. That's good? Alright, cool. I like the level of pretty much everything else. I kind of think the bass might be a little too loud now, so let's bring that down a bit, too. Give that a whirl. And I saved a bite somehow with the... All right, I took out an octave switch. That would be why. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, so we're at 9D6 now. Give this the old gentleman's try here. Where's the emulator? Here it is. Fight. Perfect. I'm almost satisfied with that. I still can't get that last arpeggio to sound how I want it to. I think I think I don't even want to change back to the noise I was using earlier. I think I just want to keep that straight up as the six noise. So let's get that out of there. 
Um, the hi-hat sounds way better now. That's an improvement. Uh, the bass, I'm kind of wondering if I picked the wrong bass noise for that. There's there's two uh, bass guitar noises. Now that you mention it, I'm... Uh, excuse me. Now that you mention it, I'm 06, I, I am starting to feel the bass is a little muddier than I want it to be. But if I bring it up and but if I bring it up an octave to get rid of that, there's there's gonna be no low end to the song. It's gonna sound terrible. I can't do that. So I think I'll try the other bass noise there. Uh, which means I'm gonna have to look up what the other bass noise is right quick. Uh, so I'll just uh, I guess I'll get Firefox open and have a look at that right quick. Um, it doesn't actually affect anything that I'm doing uh, in here in the in the MML because I'm going to have to change that manually inside the song. Uh, just let me make sure I know I'm changing the right instrument here. Uh, 27 is what I have it set to. Okay. Alright. Uh, yeah, I think I'm good with that. Let's save that up. Minimize that for a minute, and, um, hmm. Here, I'm just going to bring this frame up for a minute here, and that's just because Firefox is going to make the stream look really, really gross. So uh, just bear with me for one minute here while I look up exactly what it is I need to find. It won't take too long. Uh, this is probably something I should have a little more on hand than I do, but I mean, it's right on the forums. Like, why would I ever need to write it down for myself here? So, it is this one, I believe? Yeah, this looks right. Okay. Uh, O2, that's what I'm looking for. All right. Let's get back over to where you can see all the cool stuff going on here. So, uh, first we're going to... Take the changes I made. 92 is what I've got here. Nine D two. Go. And save and now I have to go to where the instruments are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here. This needs to change to zero two. That'll be the other bass noise, and that I might need to tweak the octave on the other bass noise, but uh, it won't sound as muddy. I'm using the less heavier bass here, but I don't really need the heavy bass when I got the guitar doing what it's doing there. So uh, let's give this one a whirl. Let's give this iteration of it a go and see how that sounds. Okay, I can't even hear the bass. <laughs> so it's cle it clearly has to come up at least one whole octave for that bass noise. So before we even listen to anything else, let's do that because there, there's no bass, man. Bass is the most important thing. Let's bring this back up to octave five. We should at least be able to hear the bass now, I would hope. Where's my clicker? There it is. Okay. We want to hear bass. There we go, we can hear it. Not very well, but it's there. That bass noise is quieter. I don't know how well the bass was coming in for you guys there, but uh, that sounds, that's thats the noise that I think I wanted initially. We just need to turn it up so we can actually hear the damn thing. So let's try it at 120 first. That might be too loud, but uh, I'd like to actually hear it <laughs> before we get too far ahead of ourselves here.
Okay. Try again. how it sounds but it's still too quiet and I'm pretty much at the limit to how much I can bring it up we'll experiment bringing it up to octave 6 I don't think this is gonna sound good but I'm at least willing to give it a try See how it sounds up the octave. We'll at least be able to hear it now. It might lose its actual bassness though, and that's no good, but we we will see. I'm not so sure about that. I, I like how clear it sounds, but it's too trebly. It's supposed to be bass. Um, we can try the inverse. What we'll do, we'll bring it back down an octave. I'll bring it back to its original level. But the thing is, when I'm bringing it down an octave here and switching back to the other bass, I'm still bringing that other bass up an octave, so I'm willing to try that out too. We'll see what, what kind of compromise we can get here. I mean, honestly, I, I think I still like the muddy bass I had originally the best, because it actually had, like, you know, the beefy bass, you know, kind of feel to it, even if it is a little, a little unclear. So, uh... Hey there, uh, FF6 fanatic. Good to see you, man. We are just hanging out, hacking some music here, trying to get a bass track to sound good, because that's pretty much the last thing that we have to do here. I think I had this set to 1C before. Well, who am I kidding? I know it was 1C. I just looked at it. Let's try this. Oh, no, MO6. It's fine. I mean, this, this wouldn't be the first time that I've, you know, obsessed over something really small like that. So, <laughs> gotta try all the options. Make sure we get her right. Oh.
I have a very mixed opinion about that. I did not like the very first note. Then I liked it for a bit. Then I didn't like it. Then I didn't like it. I don't know. That that's that one's a tough call. Like I could probably do some sort of hybrid between low and high octaves here, but uh, I'll bring it back down to the initial octave that I had it at, and I'll listen to that again. And if I don't hear anything that really pisses me off, I think I might just go with what I had originally there because you know this sounded pretty all right. I thought maybe a little muddy, but it it, it was beefy. Beefy is kind of important there because the song doesn't really have a whole lot to. A whole lot of low end that you can really kind of feel plodding it along there if the, if the bass is all trebly like it uh, kind of has been there. Eight. I almost forgot where I was going for a minute there with it. See, let's, let's go back to this sound again. I've heard all the different possible permutations of the bass, and my gut tells me this is still going to be the best one. But let's have let's have a listen here. Let's really have a listen to that bass monster. <laughs> all right. Oh, I see what I did there. I was typing the address too fast. I broke I broke it. Sorry. It was 43, not 34. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I've done that. I, I broke some other song in the game. Absolutely when I did that, but oh well. Doesn't matter. Must have like a thousand copies of uh, this ROM sitting around just for whenever I do things like that and break it beyond repair. There we go. This is just the base isolated. This is something you can do in Zed's Nest. Pretty sweet.
I'm pretty okay with that, I think. I, I don't... It's... I think I think the real issue with this song, um, this song's in A minor. I think this is the first one that I've done that's been in like an A minor-ish kind of range or something like right around that, like A flat, A sharp minor, whatever. It doesn't seem to be the best range for either of these bass guitar noises. Like it's either too muddy or too trebly on on this particular key. It's kind of kind of the issue we're having here, but I still think that I still think that that uh, the original noise that we just listened to there is probably the best that I'm gonna get. Like I could try something crazy, like try one of the synthesizer noises as a bass there, but then uh, then again, most of those are distorted enough to the point where uh, kind of might detract from the rest of everything else there too. So. Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. In, in this case, Mo6, uh, uh, they're they're mostly going to be playing the same pitch because, like, you know, the the default actual pitch for the bass drum is A. It's basically the only pitch that I can set it to where the bass drum actually has a good kick to it. Otherwise, it sounds too hollow or too tinny. Like A is like the natural like. You know, straight up kick noise. So I don't really, I don't really want to fiddle with that. I, I don't think that that's uh, that's the the thing. I, I think I think the thing is we're just gonna have to live with a not outstanding, but compared to the other options I tried, I, I think that's the best that the bass track's really going to be able to get there. Like I can try to hide some of the inadequacies of it a bit with uh, a little more panning which is done with this little P command right here. I might as well throw a little bit of panning in here. So let's maybe play the bass more to the right at 96, and we'll jam the guitar to the left at 32. That might come through a little more, a little better in the mix that way. And... Um, track 3 is mostly synth, so I want to keep that in the middle. But here I have... Uh, two halves of a chord most of the time so I'm gonna I'm gonna split these ones up a bit not as much as I split up the other tracks so maybe I'll go 48 and 80 on the panning here and uh, this is kinda hard for me to test accurately without headphones which I do not have tonight sadly but uh, my speakers are spread far enough apart that I'll be able to hear a little bit of difference I did already and <laughs> For the drums, there's really no point keeping the drums anywhere but right in the middle of the mix. So let's go for that. We'll put those latest changes into the ROM and have a listen to her. Like, we're starting to get to the point where we're just getting really, really nitpicky about this. Like, honestly, this is more than more than serviceable already. It'll be hard to top this particular version of this song that I've whipped together here. Uh... How much am I copying? 92? 92, right. Uh, oops. Oh, my cursor's in the way. That's why my shortcuts were being dumb. Duh. 